How's it going to you boys? It is still week seven. Uh, we've got a, a lot to do before we play our game today, so we'll just get right into it. Uh, recruiting for week seven. We had some visits happen. They worked pretty well and we won a game. So all those guys that it's saying are scheduled to visit this week have technically already visited. Um, we do have two open spots on the board. We will fill those out, but uh, let's just go ahead and go to let's see how are our top players doing we're in the lead uh oh alabama with roy jones is oh it looks like they're kind of going for him again so roy jones is going to be a nope for us unfortunately 64 percent locked crimson tides got him nothing that we can do there neil boone we're still looking okay calvin morris is the one that we were going to struggle with and we just got to hope um, and then that's the way, the way that it's going to go for our top players. How about it, uh, if we drop down to the guys at the bottom of the board? You know, where uh, should we be putting these points? Terrell, Carey, I think that's a no-go. Downs are losing 750 a week. <laughs> yeah, nothing that we can do there. Can't do anything for Doug Green either. Looks like he'll go to Bowling Green. Um... We can give points to Jason Robinson and Dominic Williams is looking good. So for the most part, we're still climbing. Uh, we'll put some points around, but I think that we're pretty much fine. So let's double check, make sure that we're looking okay on scholarships. And then let's uh, add some players and uh, we'll get through this week real quick. All right. So we found a few guys. Uh, we are losing Shamar Jones this season, I believe, our fullback. So we've added a couple of fullbacks to the uh, list maybe we'll see if there's somebody good there really just looking for good blocking 71 pass 65 run 62 impact packed for joe bush for jj Barr. it's a little bit worse um impact is a little bit better but that's that's all and then jamie brooks oh gosh maybe the one that's gonna be toughest to get he's a gem he's 76 overall 73 pass blocking, 72 run blocking, only 65 impact, but then can also catch. Uh, he's actually pretty quick, 85 speed, 91 acceleration, kind of strong. Uh, I mean, Jamie Brooks just kind of seems like a monster. And then we've got a tackle in Adam Hill, who goes up five overall to a 67. That's pretty uh, solid. I think we added Adam because he liked us. Uh, maybe something like that. I can't honestly remember. And Brian Davis, 69 overall D tackle is a gem. So we found another one. He's going to be tough to get. <laughs> Let's hope for the best there. Um, we have a few points left. We're going to dump those this week into some guys that we are. Um, gosh, what do we what do we want to give them to? I think that what we're going to do is give them to guys that uh, we're struggling to pick up right now. So we'll go to the bottom of the board and we'll give points to guys that we can actively scout. Remember. If they have a not applicable next to your team logo, it's if you give them 500 points or 250 points, those points will be wasted. You have to have them on your board for at least a week. So don't be losing your points there. Dominic William will get the last 250. That'll be it for this week's scouting and recruiting. And we can jump forward into uh, week eight, where we'll play the Raging Cajuns of uh, the University of Louisiana Lafayette. And we'll take a look at a few other things as well. And here we go. We get some commits after the big visits, including the 78 overall corner, Roger Reed, 69 <laughs> overall right guard, uh, Paul Burke. We get Clayton Miller, who's a 68 overall center. Uh, we got our kicker in Bryant McIntyre. Maybe not the best at 66 overall, but it fills the role. And we get a 66 overall right guard in Antoine Horton. So a bunch of stuff. We get some massive visits. 900 points for Craig Thomas on his visit. Uh, more guys are ready. Uh, th that's fantastic. We stay at number 20 in the country as uh, Asian Cajuns are one in three. And uh, while we're already on the subject, we're going to go ahead and finish out the recruiting for this episode. I'll make it a little bit shorter, I think, here. But uh, let's just go ahead and go to our classic uh deficits and making sure we'll make sure that we're doing okay again calvin morse we're just trying to hold on eh, it's not gonna happen don't even have a visit set scheduled with him i don't think that it's gonna happen unless he's we can schedule his visit all right he, we're gonna keep him for as long as we can 
but I think we get locked out. We will have the final visit. We just got to hope. Uh, Jason Robinson, we are behind. Are we gaining, though? Top schools is where we wanted to go. We are actually losing 30 points a week to Memphis. They have their visit week 13. We just want to stay in there as much as possible. So we'll go with this week 11. Hopefully we're looking okay. And then these guys were in the lead with. So we want to come as early as possible. We're going to go with that App State game. And we'll just start to stack visits on this one and try to get as many complimentary points as possible. Um, and now we can issue these uh, 2,000 or 1,800 points. We're going to be going pretty crazy. Uh, can we just make sure that we're getting or making it possible to pick up some of these guys? We found some incredible uh, looking gems last week. Let's hope that we have a chance to pick some of this up. And uh, is Brian Davis that crazy defensive tackle? 76 overall. Yeah, he's going to get our final kind of batch of points. And that's going to do it. We won't offer any scholarships this week. We'll just uh, hope that stuff can jump up. And again, as we look towards the top, a bunch of guys committed. But, I mean, somebody like Neil Boone has to commit here soon. So we're going to keep giving him the 500. And actually, you know what? No, we're taking the 500 from him. He's up 4,000. There's no way he doesn't commit, right? We just have to give him some time. So we can actually move those points down towards the bottom. That should help us a little bit. Jimmy Massey will get 300 of them. And Calvin Rutledge is... Is he good enough for him? 62 overall? Let's find somebody. Yeah, Chad Bradshaw, a little bit better of a fit for those 200 points the wide receiver can get them and that's our recruiting done for this episode actually uh we're gonna <laughs> just look at this uh that first batch five commits we got in it it puts us to the 85th best class the worst part about it <laughs> three two stars and one star we were trying to get a uh, you know more three stars than two stars this season not looking great so far but we have some really good players that, that look like we're going to have a chance to pick up. All right, it is time. We're kind of midway through this season for us to go through, um, you know, what's happening around the country. We'll first take a look here at our top 25. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'll just kind of scroll through so you can see what teams are here. We have Iowa State, number two, playing number eight, Texas. This week, that's pretty big. Nothing else in the top 10 in terms of matchups. 12 Auburn will play number 22 Tamu. We want them to win so that it looks like a quality win for us. Um, anything else? Penn State was number four. They took their first loss to Nebraska, 35 to 10. That's a pretty bad one. Uh, I, I, I forgot the battle for UT, Tennessee and Texas. Uh, Tennessee won it in overtime. They were unranked. They're now up to 19. And the former number one undefeated school in the Longhorns, Longhorns <laughs> falls to number eight after their loss. Now three and one. Maybe a bit of a Freudian slip. Uh, we got a win and TCU took a loss as well. How about receiving votes? Uh, Alabama lost and Florida State did as well. And the media poll doesn't really matter, so we won't look at it. But now... We can move on to our conference standings. We'll go through and see just kind of what's happening in each conference. Uh, Miami and Clemson atop the ACC right now. In the Atlantic, it's Clemson 3-0 in conference, 4-1 overall. Uh, Miami 7-0 overall, 5-0 in conference. They're playing a lot of games, backloading their schedule with those buys. That's kind of interesting. The American just sees uh, Houston and Cincinnati. They're just kind of getting into their conference play. Three and two and two and two, but both undefeated in conference. The Big 12, again, we don't have a championship game. So whoever is at the top will win it right now. It's West Virginia sitting at number three are the Mountaineers at seven and oh, four and oh in conference. Although the Cyclones, Iowa State, also undefeated three fewer games played. All of them uh, out of conference games that they need to make up, but two teams at that uh, perfect 1,000 on the season. In the Big Ten, Michigan is undefeated at number nine, followed up by Indiana 4-1. and one. Both undefeated in conference, though, and unfortunately for them, both in the same division. In the West, we've got Minnesota at a 5-1, and 3-1 and one conference. So interesting to see where that'll end up. This conference USA, I guess, uh, Middle Tennessee, North Texas. And Old Dominion, all undefeated in conference, all with four wins so far. Um, 
are Independence Notre Dame. They're a 90 overall team, three and four on the season. BYU's four and three, Army three and one. In the MAC, it is Northern Illinois. Oh my gosh, it's a big tie for first. Northern Illinois, Miami of Ohio, Buffalo, Bowling Green, and Central Michigan all tied for that first spot. Um, kind of bonkers in the Mountain West. Wyoming is the top of the squadron right now, five and one. An interesting UNLV at one and four is sixth in the conference, uh, but the Mountain Division has Wyoming at, top, uh, at the top, and the West has Hawaii at the top there. Rainbow Warriors looking okay. They're actually a better team than us by overall. Pac-12, undefeated. Number 16, Arizona State leads. That's going to be them leading the South with Oregon at 4-1, and one, leading the North. Uh, Oregon, Oregon State, Washington State, and then Washington. Kind of a weird bit of standings right now. Um, SEC Auburn, that Auburn team, again, if we look at their schedule, we beat them by a point. So <laughs> one of our biggest wins against a 95 overall school who is leading the SEC right now, 4-0 in conference, uh, Florida atop the East, 6-1, 5-1 in conference. And uh, how about Alabama? Yikes, 3-3, three 1-2 and three, one and two in conference, only team worse in the SEC West is Mississippi State, who is not having a good year so far. Our conference now, the Sun Belt. We are 5-1, and 3-0 uh, in conference. Not a whole lot of competition so far. We've played more games than other people, but it's looking fine for us. Um, let me go back. Anything crazy for us? No, not really. Not really. A couple of teams, maybe you don't expect Georgia Southern to start the season. One and six of Georgia State going one and four. Troy starts four and one. Again, their only losses to us. Um, Appalachian State, two and three on the season, but one and one in conference. And conference play really is is what matters, I would say, almost the, the most for a G5 school. And uh, that's our conference standings. Curious to see where some of that wraps up. Uh, I, I feel like eventually we're going to get some weird championship games. We can go into, oh, wow, into the uh, Heisman watch list. We've got the senior running back, Letty Brown from West Virginia, atop of everything. Zamir White from Georgia falls down a little bit, and Kosi Perry does as well. And one that is kind of odd to me, Cyrus Habibi Likio. He is sitting in that fourth spot, I guess maybe, oh my gosh, in the game against Utah, 42 carries for 357 yards and then only two touchdowns. What is what is he doing so far on the season? I mean, if you got if you got that much, oh my goodness, this is insane! A thousand yards already, a thousand yards already. We're halfway through the season. What is he, he's averaging seven yards a carry, over two hundred a game, and he only has eight touchdowns. <laughs> That's insane. Perfect. Uh, you know, we can truly say those are video game numbers. <laughs> Hassan Hall is rounding out this uh, top five for the Heisman, the uh, senior running back from Louisville. He's also having a decent game, uh, 24 carries, 159 yards, and the same amount of touchdowns, but 357 on the ground in one game is insane. In our last little bit here of looking at ESPN, Grayson McCall, Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Week last week against ULM, so... Decent game for him. 15 to 22 for 255 yards. Five carries picked up 20 yards, and he had three total touchdowns. Is that back to back weeks? No. Almost back to back weeks for him. Well, we'll see if we can make it back to back in this one. And now, before we get into this game, we've got one more thing we want to look at, and that's uh, passing or, you know, leaders, stat leaders so far on this season. We've got uh, Nkosi Perry from Miami. Throwing for over 2,000 yards already. Grayson down in 38th, throwing for 1,100. Which isn't terrible for me. Um, Hall, that running back from Louisville. Actually, three, four running backs of the top five are on that Heisman watch list. Um, two guys already over 1,000 yards, eight games in for us. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, Reese White down in 68th with 494. Receiving wise, uh, Dion Fountain is our leader. Uh, Miami, I mean, I've got the, they've got the quarterback with the most passing yards, so it makes sense that Miami has two guys in the top five. 
Terry out of Florida State. So a lot, a lot of passing going on in Florida. Um, but yeah, Deion Fountain, 419 receiving yards, puts him in 52nd. Tackle leaders, you can't really count because the way that the game calculates tackles in a played game versus sim game is kind of weird. So Gunter is a top with Shelton in fourth, but it's a little bit odd. Um, sack leaders, though, we can't count this. Joel Hall, six sacks uh, for the man, the defensive tackle. Puts him tied for second with a bunch of guys. And then interception-wise, Alex Spillum with two down at 114. How about uh, Bracey from Notre Dame? Seven picks already on the season. That's pretty impressive. Um, but it makes sense. They've been losing a lot, so the defense has been out on the field a bunch. I don't know. Maybe that makes sense. And the last thing before we can get into our game is the NCAA kicking leaders. Massimo Biscardi tied for second again with a 54-yarder, one behind the guy from Maryland. I'm impressed. A 54-yarder is a freaking bomb. Anyways, let's play this game. Uh, we'll see, of course, Leo Corso in our uh, corner. They are technically the better team, um, but I'm imagining that they really haven't played anybody. Yeah, they lost a relatively close one to a decent Louisiana Tech. They lost in overtime to a mediocre Boise State. Um, Ole Miss beat them soundly, and they beat a bad Georgia Southern. So, uh, again, this is one that should be a cakewalk. They're one and three. Question is, will it actually be a cakewalk? We'll go in 81 overall, so they have the slight edge at 84. Offenses are locked, but they've got an eight overall advantage on defense. That could cause me problems. Uh, we're on the road. We're going to wear the all whites this time around. Wait, I feel like we do that a lot. Let's uh, let's wear the black pants. And the Ragin' Cajuns can just wear their standard homes. Let's get into this. All righty. So as we load into the game here in Lafayette at Cajun Field, I got to say this is not the first time we've loaded into this one. Uh, tried to play this earlier and... Uh, this is how it went. Oh no, I'm a little bit worried. Clock expiring. Maybe, maybe something good can happen. Please don't break this tackle. He broke one. Are you kidding me? Oh no. <laughs> this is so, so bad. It's going to be 31 to 10. At the half, we have to... Maybe we block the field goal? No, we don't even get close to that. So 31-10 going into the locker rooms and we have to give them the ball <laughs> oh no we might just get fired on the tarmac it froze the game freaking froze wow i got bailed out but i guess i'm glad that we had a little bit of a freeze because it allows us to start over man we got lucky as hell uh we're gonna elect to kick this one off so already a different outcome on this game and we'll have Biscardi kick this one off. We'll get underway. And this is going to be a touchback to start it. So defense needs to come out and get a stop, which they weren't doing before the game froze. So to start this drive off, they're going to hand it off up the middle. And oh my gosh, they picked up nine yards. Too easy. Let's see what we can do. I, I This is going to be problematic all game long. They will go play action on this second down and throw it away. So we do have them in third down, but this is going to be a tough stop. We'll bring a lot of pressure. It's going to be the safety blitz here on third and one. Can we get this stop? They throw it out towards the edge. Spill them. Not there in time. We tripped them up, but even if the dive was uh, you know, a little bit better user, they still get the first down there. We sold out to stop the run up the middle there, and they went to the edge, so <laughs> doesn't work out too well. Here's Gunter having his tackle broken, and yeah, Chris Smith, I will say, was destroying us before the freeze as well. Believe it or not, his average uh, yard per run right now is actually lower than it was when we had the freeze, and hey, yeah, it looks like it's still going to just continue. This man, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was frustrating before, it's frustrating now. On this first down, we're going to see the play action and a man out open in the flat, but he stepped out of bounds, thankfully, so only a gain of three. And I'm very much expecting a run 
to the running back here. They keep it on the option, and, well, the quarterback gets himself 16 yards. This, this offense is literally unstoppable for us, apparently. This is exactly how the game was going before the freeze, so at least I don't feel too bad. Um, we just don't have a defense against these guys this season, apparently. Trips left on this one. Is going to see a run up the middle. The blocking is incredible, and it's a touchdown with broken tackles. Uh, this is how this entire game is going to go when we're on defense. I guarantee you that. So just like that, it's 7-0. And if we aren't able to score points, we will lose this game. This uh, Raging Cajuns team does not look like it's going to be easy for us to beat. Uh, Diggs, though, maybe giving us good field position could save us. Crosses the 50 on the kick return. Now it's up to the offense to get it done. On first down, we'll try a read option. I want them to uh, have to be worried about grace and running from the start, as apparently this is just a game for running backs. Reese White goes 18 yards on his first carry. Safety's playing pretty deep. We'll run this one up the middle and trying to use our blockers as effectively as we can. We get two yards. On well, second and eight, we're going to try the counter. We need the polling guard to get some blocks. That's going to work just fine. Reese, not quite enough for the first down, but third and inches. We should be able to get this. If not, we will just uh, go for it on fourth down. Not kicking a field goal when the other team is going to be unstoppable and we lost a yard, of course. Oh, uh, this could end very poorly. I'm absolutely going for this, though. On the read, McCall got some blocks. Got the first down. Broke a tackle, still on his feet. Maybe I shouldn't have taken that shot, but trying to get that first and goal. Instead, we're down at the 12 or the 11. And we're going to throw here. From the 12-yard line, the corner... The end zone there. We find Dion Fountain. Tie ball game. First pass of the day. But if the defense can't do anything, that's that's what I'm most worried about. On this first down, we're going to see what we can do. Kind of expecting another run. And it looks like, yeah, it's a handoff out towards the edge. Can we get there? Finally a stop? Oh my gosh, a loss of a yard. He did not want to go down, though. So now we've got ourselves a second and 11. And I'm accidentally on a D-line. <laughs> kind of brought him back into the zone. That was weird. We do get the stop and, uh, and force a third down. But I am certainly worried about stopping this. As apparently, I'm switching to these D-linemen on accident and screwing us up. So we give up 15 yards there. Plays like that are exactly what I've been worried about this entire game. And, and what I'm going to continue to worry about is that... Uh, we can have a couple of good plays in a row, but it's not enough. This man is literally unstoppable. Oh my gosh. They have 112 rushing yards. It's the first quarter. It makes zero sense to me how this uh, running back can be so good against us. Uh, I mean, we know at most he's an 89 overall. He's destroying. Thankfully, a stop there, second and 14. Can we do something here on second and long? They're running out towards the edge again. That's also part of our problem is just stopping the edge runs. And then uh, first attempt tackling. We do have them in the third and five. But last time they got 15 here. So we are going to trade the man coverage. And we'll see if that helps. Uh, quarterback scrambling. We actually, I, I blew my coverage. But he tried to scramble up the middle. So we're able to get there. I've never been so lucky to mess up in this game. <laughs> We'll hold them to a field goal attempt here, and that one's good, but we're only down three. Maybe a chance to take the lead here in the, you know, dying stages of the first quarter. Diggs got us past the 50 his first time fielding the ball here. This is an, another returnable one. If the blocking is good, I feel pretty confident the blocking was not good. So we are inside our own 20. Oh, that's not the way that we wanted to start this one. The running game was pretty solid on that first drive. We're going to try to lean on it some more here on the second one. I didn't see much there, so we cut it back and managed to get five yards. Maybe a little bit of a animation cheese there, but I'll take it right now. Try to play action on this one. They bring in some pressure. I don't feel comfortable. We do have an open Javon Hiley. A little bit late getting it to him, but he holds on through the contact for another first down for us. Now we're going to try another counter play here. 
on what's going to be the final play of the quarter. And Reese made a man miss. The little stutter step makes it work, and he picks up 22 yards on the ground. That was fantastic. And as we come to the end of the first quarter, down three, but driving the ball, we get the ball to start the second half. Uh, I, I feel bad about the fact that we were getting destroyed and the game froze on me, but I am certainly pleased with the result. <laughs> Still very much a chance that we lose this read option to start the second quarter. Grayson's going to keep it. Grayson's got some blockers in front of him following the blockers. Grayson is in. Oh, the running was good. Now we have almost 100 rushing yards at the start of the second quarter. And we're going to take a four-point lead. First and ten. I'm expecting a run. They will put this one on the ground, though, and wide open over the middle. He's got it. And just like that, they go 31 yards across midfield. Feels like there's nothing that we can do right now. As this is going to be a handoff out towards the edge. Sidney McCray was there. Thankfully enough to hold up Chris Smith. Uh, allows back up to a knife. Look at that. 10 carries for 103 yards for him already. That's too much. If we're not able to get the stop, we're in trouble. This is going to be a play action. They're looking. Quarterback scrambling, and we're going to come up and force him to slide and force the third down. We have been anything uh, but good on our third down attempts. This is going to be a handoff. He's going to cut it out towards the edge, and thankfully... The blocking isn't great. We do get a stop on defense. And they're going to kick the incredibly long field goal. I think that we're going to see a kick six here. Honestly, this is a 61-yard field goal attempt. There is no way that this kicker has the leg for it. I hope it is a fieldable ball. I'm bringing this out. Could have had great field position with Diggs. Or we could just allow him to lose said field position. <laughs> Try to go backwards. <laughs> we already knew we were losing a ton of tried for the miracle that uh that decision doesn't work out for us the blocking wasn't there and the only uh benefit of that is that we have the ball because that was not good on first and 10 we we're gonna run this ball although i don't feel like we're gonna have a good one should probably audible out of this but well, we'll take what we can get and that was a great cutback for five yards go with a play action on this second and five really want to make them think that we're running it as much as possible although I don't feel like we're going to get anything out of this, so we scramble forward with Grayson. He got maybe half a yard on that one, and it's third down. We're going to try a little wide receiver screen on this third down. I'm honestly not too confident about it. The blocking is holding up well enough, though, and Dion Fountain gets enough for the first down. Keeps this drive alive. Grayson McCall now 3 of 3 through the air as we'll go back to him here. And it seems like it's working pretty well. They're just heaving this one up. We were about to get hit. And yeah, Dion Fountain can't come down with it. But it was either that or make a risky throw or take a sack. I'm sure one of the other wide receivers was open. But I really wanted the deep ball. It just doesn't work out. A second and ten. Thankfully, we still have possession. And Reese just needs to get north. Only got a yard there. Third and long for us. Halfway through the second quarter. Going to be looking for bed good on this one. Just trying to be patient. There he is wide open. Coverage not there, but he fumbles the ball, and they're going to pick it up. <laughs> and this is a good return as well. Oh, bed good couldn't hold on to that through the uh, big hit. Surprised that they don't call that just an incompletion. And there's our first turnover of the game. That's, that's disappointing, and it's out clearly before he hits the ground, so... That's uh, turnover number one, and let's hope that that's the only one. They're going to go five wide to start this drive after the turnover. And the quarterback has a man just tiptoeing along the sideline for 20 yards. The route running ability of some of these guys is pretty insane, I think. As he's open in the corner, quarterback's going to start to scramble. We're going to be there for the big hit. He fumbles it, and Bush picks it up, and he's gone. It's going to take a miracle for them to catch him. Bush at the 40, the 30, the 20. He's at the 10 and he's in the scoop and score. They get a fumble. We get one right back, except ours turns into six and increases the lead. What a hit on the quarterback. He was sliding down every uh, time he kept it prior to that one. Tries to get the extra yards and pays for it as we drilled him with the hit stick and nobody's going to catch up to our man there. 21 to 10. First down, expecting a run. This one is handed off 
up the middle again. And hey, at least, if, if we're not giving up 10 yards a, a rush, I guess that's okay. <laughs> Second and four, though. These guys got an all too easy uh, couple of yards there. Here's a screen. Oh my gosh, we should have had a pick six. I don't know who that was, but the DB just ran past his man. And that went from possible pick six to a good pickup for him. And now they're going to hand it off to Chris Smith again, and he's going to pick up 15. Oh my gosh, this we can't stop this offense. I was talking about how the Ducks running back, uh, Habibi Likio, was kind of ridiculous with his 357 yards, but that might happen to us now. They are just, like, unstoppable on the ground. These guys are really showing out for their uh, their one recruit that's come to visit. There's a wide open man <laughs> in Peter LeBlanc. It looked like Alex Spillum or whoever was back there just uh, lost his footing. Did he trip on his own feet? No, he just, just got his ankles broken on a man running past him. That's, uh, that's a shame. We're under two minutes to go in the half here at a minute and 40. Really hoping for the stop. Kind of worried about Chris Smith. It is going to be a handoff to him, and we're there for a decent hit on him, only allowing four, which I'm going to call the win. ULL took their first time out after that one. And on second and six, well, we had a gap to get to Smith, but we just couldn't get to it quick enough, and he gets 11 yards and a first and goal. They've now taken two timeouts as we're bringing a big blitz. Thankfully, it gets to him. Uh, but second and goal, a minute and a half. We just uh, kind of hope that we have enough time for another possession. I'm not sure if I'm just fooling myself, but it feels to me like the man coverage has been working better. This is going to be a run up the middle that Gunter got off the block and able to stop. So this is a third and goal. Not an easy one to pick up. We'll hope that the coverage is good enough to get this stop. Running back, yes, I kind of baited them into throwing it to him, and we secured the tackle, so we will take our first time out with 40 seconds left. And we'll hope that after they hit this field goal, there's almost no chance that they miss it, uh, that we'll have enough chance for ourselves to get a drive, and that we can uh, maybe extend this lead going into the locker room. As always, the return man could be a major difference for us. We'll see what we can do. I'm going to bring it out of the end zone. And no, pulled down from behind. Kind of a horse collar inside the 20 once again. This is where things could fall apart for us. I'm going to be honest. 35 seconds, two timeouts. But we're going to be forced into a passing situation. And that typically doesn't work all that well for us. Tyson Mobley... Uh, isn't able to pick up the first down, so the clock is moving, and maybe I should have taken a timeout. But we're just gonna, I guess, let it tick down and hope that they're not quite ready for this. As over the middle, we find Mobley again, and we can not have to worry about the timeout because we do get the first down. It stops the clock. And we'll continue looking towards that right side of the field. I'm gonna put Dion Fountain on a late kind of go route in a tough throw to Tyson, who... Might have got out of bounds, but I'm taking the timeout anyways. Eight seconds left. Maybe looking for a field goal. I feel bad for our receivers on the left side of the field because they're not getting a whole lot of action. Looking for Javon Hiley here. Second and five. The timing route was perfect. Four, three, two, one. I'm going for the end zone. No, we fumbled it out of bounds. There's one second, though. Oh, my goodness. We got lucky. We're going to kick this field goal. I thought maybe I would have a chance to juke that man out and score the touchdown. <laughs> Thankfully. With probably less than a second, truthfully, to go. We we get out of bounds, and that allows us to kick this field goal. We can extend our lead. Oh, back up to 11. Clock expires on the half. I... <laughs> that was almost a big blunder there. But it works out. Uh, and this halftime is looking a lot better than the last one. So I'm happy for that. But we need to stop that run. Otherwise, things are just going to continue to be difficult on defense. No freeze from the game, thankfully, on this one. Means we can get into the third quarter. Uh, I don't know why, but I'm going to bring this out with Diggs. And the blocking is good enough to get past the 25. And good enough to get us to the 35. We have a chance to extend our lead to three scores on this one. I still cannot believe how uh, lucky we are that the game froze, but that's just the way that it works sometimes. 
And we're going to scramble with McCall early on this one. Get out of bounds after a quick eight-yard gain. The scramble worked pretty well there, and now I've got to kind of get myself out of the habit of calling a ridiculous amount of runs. Uh, we'll just hand this one off up the middle. Let Reese pick up another eight on the ground and get us a first down. Going to get a little bit risky on this one. We're throwing the bubble screen. And Mobley, thankfully, doesn't fumble the ball or anything, but picks up six yards. Our uh, wide receivers have been doing a very good job blocking on the screen so far this season. I'm going to hand this one off again, and Reese picks up another first down. Moving the ball very well on this drive so far. I'm going to continue to run it. They're a little bit more stacked inside the box this time, and yeah, they get through the line. Not enough guys to block the amount of pressure that they brought. We lose a yard. Unfortunately for them, we're going to stick with this run. See what we can do on it. On second and 11, it's handed off. Man, their linebacker just ran around. He's, he weaved his way into the back there and stops that from turning into a decent game. So we are in a third and nine in a spot where I'm not sure we could kick a field goal. We need at least a couple more yards. We're going to step back to throw, and there is Javon Hiley. Oh, saw him out of the corner of my eye. We get the quick 23-yard reception. Good little route from him. Just uh, too passive from the safety. Hopefully when uh, we get those good big chunk yardage uh, pass plays, we're able to just uh, you know open up the running lanes a little bit more, and it might seem that way as Reese White picks up an immediate first and goal. 10 yards there. He's up to 83 on the day. And I think this might be a little bit of a mistake, but we're going to try it anyways. The strong toss out towards the edge. We're motioning Shamari Jones to get him out closer. And Reese White in a foot race is going to find the end zone. Was able to get out to the edge. Four yards into the end zone. And we're going to increase this to a 31-13 to lead. So needless to say, that's going well for us. Texas up 21-7 over the currently number two ranked Iowa State Cyclones. Could we see another undefeated team fall? I would love it. In my mind, the fewer undefeated teams there are, the better. As this one is going to be a quick play action. Quarterback, plenty of time. Plenty of time finally scrambling. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to meet him at the corner. We do pull him down, but he picked up nine. That's just uh, too far off that time. I do feel like in this game, though, the, the man coverage is working a lot better for us. Uh, however, on second and one, we're bringing pressure. Got to bring the blitz, I think, in this situation. Uh, which is, what are we going to see? No, they're going to go to the air. And their man kind of screwed himself over. Had a, had the line to gain. But then just uh, ran back over it, so he lost that forward progress. We're bringing the blitz again. This one's a run out towards the edge. We're there to get the stop. Fourth and three. Oh, the aggressive play calling works out. Maybe a little bit of luck on that... Uh, second down but we get the stop on defense and it's gonna bring out the punt team so we survived another drive and uh we're just getting those plays every once in a while that that work and allow us to see digs get out on the field for punt returns like that 13 yards gives us decent field position and uh i think another touchdown here could ice this game especially being uh that we are already up so much and we're nearing the end of the third quarter. We probably hit it on this drive. East White picks up two yards trying to find the edge, uh, but the clock's sticking away and that's uh, probably ULL's biggest enemy right now in this game. We're going to go ahead and try the play action pass on second and eight and we take a sack. That uh, might have been thrown a pick there, but at least I uh, wouldn't have taken the sack. It's third and long. 16 yards to go here, a minute and a half left in the third quarter. I'm just tossing this one up because I didn't see anything else. Ben Good comes down with it. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. We get the first down. Grace McCall's only had one incompletion on the day, apparently. And our man just went up there and got the ball. That's going to keep the drive alive. And it's going to be a morale crusher for uh, the Raging Cajuns. Difficult to deal with plays like that as Grayson takes a little bit of a shot, keeping that on the read option for four yards. And we're going to get risky here and try the speed option. I actually don't like the direction we're going, so we're going to see if flipping the play helps us at all. And no, that was terrible. <laughs> Everything about that was so bad. We lose five yards. It's third long again. 
only three of five on our third down conversions. We'll step back to throw outside the pocket. Javon, well, we had him, but not enough to get the first down. It's fourth and five, and, you know, we're going to kick this field goal. But uh, the third quarter is going to end first. So seeing as we already have a lead and we're going to extend it, we'll let the clock just burn out the rest of the way here. We'll head into the fourth. Uh, honestly, if we get the ball back here in the fourth quarter, we're burning the clock. I don't want these guys to have any time to come back in this one. The kick is good. Down the middle. 34 to 13 here. And hey, we burned two seconds off the clock by taking it into the fourth quarter. That's big. We'll stick with the man coverage on this first down. As they are going to go with the slip screen to open up the drive. That typically doesn't work well, and thankfully they do lose the yards. Unable to break that tackle is Chris Smith. Their quarterback, Chandler Fields, is now, I think, 11 of 12, but only 100 yards on the day. They go four wide. They're going to step back to pass, and Bush gets the pick. Somehow stole it away from the receiver there. It's his second turnover generated in this game. He had the scoop and score uh, fumble recovery earlier. Now he's got the interception, and wow, what a pick. So starting across the 50 with this drive, the defense getting it done just enough. That quarterback's second in completion of the day. He's been so accurate, but... Just couldn't find his man, and uh, even if we don't pick anything up here, we're just going to burn clock on this drive. And you know, if we're unable to pick up yards, maybe we get the chance to attempt a ridiculously long field goal in the process. Read option. Reese is going to keep it. He's going to lose a yard, though. Got a third and 11. This could be a little bit foolish, but we're going to keep it on the ground just to keep that clock burning. On third and 11, I don't expect to pick it all up. I just want a couple. We do get three, and now we can burn the clock down and kick another field goal. This is actually obtainable. This is a 54-yarder. We've already gotten a 54-yarder on the season. We got all the power that we needed. It's right down the middle. I think that maybe we could hit a 60-yarder. Oh, that was a beautiful kick. And uh, maybe we had a 45-yarder earlier. I'm pretty sure it was 54. We extend the lead. Texas. Uh, up still just a touchdown in that one. So that's coming down to the wire in the Big 12. 331 left in this game. I'm going to expect a lot of passing. However, they open it up with a run. Shelton has his tackle broken. And Chris Smith picks up 13 more yards. It's actually a little bit ridiculous how often he has those big plays. Another first down. He's going to go to the air. And ooh, 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 finds Peter LeBlanc for 12. Another quick first down. And so we'll switch into the zone for a player or two just to slow things up. Kind of a counter from the running back. Got me uh, out of position, and it's another eight yards. So thankfully, the clock is burning on that one since they didn't pick up the first down. So we are going down to three minutes left in this game. Another run up the middle, and another first down. We might end up taking a timeout just to stem the bleeding on this drive. This is a pretty crazy fast hurry up that we're seeing. Quarterback scrambling. We already got him to fumble once. He holds on to it, but a big hit that time. And on second and seven, they're going to step back to pass once again. The out route finds Peter LeBlanc for 10 yards. And the drive is working really well. But again, do they have enough time to do anything with it? Quarterback scrambling. He slides down, thankfully, because he could have picked up a whole lot more. Yeah, we're going to bring a little zone blitz on this one. We did technically get beat, but we only give up two yards, and it's third and five. We'll bring out the QB spy. They go back to pass. I'm on Joel Hall. I don't like it when I'm on a defensive lineman, but when the play snaps, we don't have much other choice. It's hard to change. And they managed to get the first and goal, so... Now we'll be on a defensive lineman and kind of mean it as we drop back into some pass coverage. This one is completed out towards the edge for two yards. Clock still ticking, though. A minute and 40 to go. And we're going to continue to bring some pressure on the blitz in, in hopes that we get the stop. If they look like they're going to pass, we'll try to do something, but no. They find LeBlanc over the middle, completely uncovered. I don't know what our zone's doing, but uh, it's a touchdown with a minute and a half to go. And they're going to go for this. On the two-point conversion. Did he get in? I don't know. It didn't show me. He was so close. We got him stopped right about there. How many points do they have? Oh, no. They're going for the onside kick. 37 to 19. 
We gotta make sure that we get this stop. <laughs> that was kind of bizarre. Uh, the onside kick is recovered by Shamari Jones, the fullback, who breaks a tackle on Shamari Jones! Oh, if he was a little bit faster, could take that all the way to the house. Instead, he just gets us inside the 20. Oh, that would have been incredible. I know that realistically, us scoring a touchdown on that uh, doesn't really help us, as opposed to just burning out the clock, but how incredible of a play would that have been? The fullback just needed a little bit more speed. Reese White here on first down picks up four yards. And the clock will be ticking below a minute on this one. We're at 45 seconds. Uh, the Raging Cajuns not taking timeouts means that, to me, they've conceded this game. So we should just be able to end this one. And I don't technically think that we need to take a knee here. But we will just to make sure that the clocks don't do anything weird. We also gain 10 XP for doing it, and we get another win here as the clock expires. 37 to 19. A little bit of an asterisk next to it. I'm, not, I'm okay with saying that because we were down multiple scores at halftime the first time I attempted to play this game. Uh, it just froze. Grayson McCall ends up 12 of 13 for 200 yards, 48 yards on the ground, and some touchdowns. Uh, but I just, man, how difficult was stopping the run? These guys got it done, and uh, we're lucky that we were able to hold them as well as we did. And uh, the two turnovers in our favor are certainly, certainly useful. So we don't have to go out of the game to see it, thankfully. Uh, on the games around the country there in the bottom right, the Cyclones of Iowa State hold on to win it in overtime against number eight, Texas. So they will stay undefeated. Texas takes their second loss in as many weeks. Um, how about our game, though? A bit of a struggle. We gave up 200 yards on the ground, and they honestly didn't have the ball for that long. Uh, we win the turnover battle. We pass more than them. Win the time of possession battle, but, I mean, just getting enough stops when it mattered, and uh, maybe getting a little bit lucky with some plays as well. Our players of the game, I think, are pretty obvious. Um, Grayson McCall. One incompletion, two touchdowns, 250 total yards. But on defense, Derek Bush, five tackles, a tackle for a loss. It shows the interception. It does not show the fumble recovery and the defensive touchdown. What a game. And on top of all of that, we finally hit level nine. I feel like it's been a while since we've leveled up. Um, but we will go ahead and see. Can I put this in now because it could help us? With recruiting? Uh, yeah, it is going to... No, it's not going to help us. We're going to go locksmith right now just because I know that at some point we're going to want to unlock a guy. Tempting to go for the closer, get that extra 500 points. But I don't think we need that as much as the ability to, uh, you know, get back into a recruiting battle. So we can advance the week here. We've got Arkansas State on the road for our week nine matchup. Uh, I'm curious, are we going to move up from number 20? In our recruiting news, Calvin Morris, the 77 overall left guard, has unfortunately committed to Temple. But we get the 65 overall left end in Craig Thomas. So that's useful. Um, some recruits ready to visit. Not much other news. And we move up one spot to number 19 in the country. So definitely happy with that. We'll take a quick little sneak preview. Doesn't look like Arkansas State's going to be a very good team. So again, we're expected to do well. But will I throw a game away? I, I got to imagine we take a loss somewhere along the lines here. And a quick little look here at our top 25. Iowa State, West Virginia, 1-3. Both undefeated teams out of the Big 12 playing this week. Michigan will play a ranked Minnesota. Florida will play a ranked Georgia. Um, Arizona and USC will play. Texas and TCU are going to have to play. A lot of, a lot of ranked matchups there. And uh, a loss that we didn't see last week was the battle for OSU. Ohio State loses to Oklahoma State by six. So they're going to take their second loss. That's another top 10 team dropping. So a lot of teams taking losses. I mean, you've got one in three Oklahoma State. That was their first win, and it's enough to get them ranked. <laughs> very, very curious. Uh, what's happening in the rankings a lot of weird stuff multiple three loss teams not a crazy amount of undefeated teams left but uh that's the way it goes and we have our first bcs poll here 
what are we ranked in the one that matters for our bowl game seedings? We're still in 19th there. But if we keep winning, we'll slowly move up and maybe we'll get to a bowl game where uh, we're faced against a team that we just can't even come close to competing with. That's going to do it for this episode, though. So once again, I'm going to say thank you guys so much for watching and all the support. We are uh, seeing some ridiculous growth that still blows my mind. So thank you for that. Um, and it's time for a couple of plugs. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do that. Also, feel free to follow us on Twitter, join our community Discord, and maybe head over and follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. The Twitter and Discord links are down in the description below. But otherwise, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.